Since we're in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Whoa, let's calm down. I'm not asking for a favor or anything. I'm just suggesting we stop by. When we're in the neighborhood. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I was thinking you'd come too. Great, and when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, wear that one. Oh, and help yourself to the good snacks and put your feet on the coffee table. Mother hates that. That's the idea. Anything else? Things on Monarch have really cooled off. I didn't think MSI and the Iconoclast would ever talk. Outside of shouting four-letter words, I mean. Sure. And fish sticks are really made from Saltuna. Look, I won't knock the work you did. I'm sure they'll have a good cry, look through old photographs, share a pint of premium double chocolate cacao gelato. But sooner or later, things will go back to the way they were. People don't change. Not really. Just being realistic. As long as they keep their business on Monarch, their situation's got nothing to do with me. Anyway, I'd hate to see you get broken up if this thing between them doesn't last. Hey, let's not make this out to be more than it is. Anything else? If there's one thing you could say about Lucky Montoya, he was always at the center of a story. Guess this is fitting. Sure, like Ada said, he was a big name among freelancers. I met him at Lost Hope once. He was buying rounds for everyone and telling a story about one of his jobs. Pretty sure half of it was made up. You ever get the feeling someone's just trying too hard? There was just something about Montoya I couldn't quite trust. He was always the center of a room and he slapped a lot of backs to stay there. I'm trying to say that if he screwed this job up, that's on him. I still like our odds. He may have had a rep, but you're more capable than he ever was. Hey, don't get used to it. What's on your mind? From his arm? The decay makes it hard to tell. Could be a lot of things. Torn off by something with big teeth, torn off by something with big claws, torn off by someone with a moderately sharp blade. Or maybe he just got too close to heavy machinery. Sure something on your mind it's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces looks okay from far off but once you get close you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for even the bribes are overpriced the real question is why didn't I leave sooner there's all these invisible rules and everyone spends all their energy just trying not to break them I was a top-tier surgeon, but I could hardly open a pack of gauze without ten people signing off first. That's no way to live. People call Byzantium the jewel of Halcyon, but really, it's just paste. Everything's polished and bureaucracy. Take a close look and you'll see it's deader than anywhere else in the colony. Don't trust anyone, don't touch anything, and whatever you do, don't show your teeth when you smile. What, like primals? Nah. People are extremely competitive about cosmetic dentistry. It can get ugly. Interesting like a colonoscopy. I trained as a surgeon. More my folks' idea than mine, but I made the best of it. Lots of them, unfortunately. I even sculpted a few. Turns out Byzantines are more concerned with having square shoulders and a good profile than... Well, anything else. There's my parents' place. Smell that? 
industrial grade cleaning solvent and desperation. Marilyn, is that you? Moss, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. There you go again, Captain. Always menacing, polite society. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Yep, we're a pair of disgraceful lowlifes. Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. It's the floors. You had the floors redone with real Terran marble? Since when can you afford that? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. What did you do? Why, we did what any grieving parents would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather, uh, substantial. You what? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. Why did you do that? We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd... you'd run off to become a... a miscreant, could we? Shh! Someone could hear you! We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of 12-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you going to do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to, uh, leave. Quietly, if you don't mind. I'm afraid it would cause quite a stir if the neighbors saw you two stomping about. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn, please. Don't cause a scene. Damn right, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. I wanted them to get upset. I just thought it would play out differently. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid aether wave dramas and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. I know. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. Hey, the last thing I want to do is sit around thinking about all this. I want to take action. 
I wanna... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary. All the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing. And I'll get to cut them off. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group, Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. So, what kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're running a special on dismemberment policies. Buy one, get one half off. We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Legally speaking, corporations are not allowed to operate on Monarch, but financially speaking, there are certain costs to running a business from within Byzantium's walls. So while our official address is in the city, and while our office here is technically an extension of that address, we found it more expedient to conduct our key operations here. So we can... what's the phrase? Pass savings to the consumer, of course. Oh, it's certainly not about what I say. That's all down to our legal team and our CFO. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she said, if we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd, theoretically, add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. Please. My policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Very well. I'll do it. But then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. Good thing I caught up on my messages, because I got one saying my policy's been updated with a new beneficiary. That wouldn't be your doing, would it? Hey, you did the real work. All I had to do was not be dead. I'm just glad my folks aren't going to live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Sure. You did my job, so here's your fee. Could have fooled me with all your tough talk. What's gotten into you? You sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to get all mushy or anything. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day, they watch yours. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. It's nothing personal, it's just the closest thing I've got to a code. Anyway, enough of the touchy-feelies, huh?